Five Books and Counting, The Tales from the Omni Vault continues to expand as a universe. Go ahead and check the links down in the description to get your copies today. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and I gotta take a break from the Godzilla stuff for just a little bit to talk about Superman. Because earlier this week, our first look at the upcoming new Superman from James Gunn's Superman Legacy was revealed. And after everybody confirmed that it was not an AI-generated image, obviously people had thoughts. And I have thoughts of my own. So here's the image itself. You can pause the video if you want to get a nice long look at it, take in all the details. I will be breaking this down as much as I possibly can. Starting with the look of the suit itself. It's very different from what we've seen of live-action Superman suits before. And I must specify live-action. With animation, you know, they don't necessarily have to go into as much detail as live-action, so it's going to look a little bit different. With live-action, though, you've got to design something that'll look good in live-action. And for the most part, we've seen... Roughly a similar aesthetic, even when there have been a few differences here and there. For the most part, Superman's costume has remained some form of spandex, or at least some kind of really form-fitting outfit. Man of Steel and the other Snyder movies gave Henry Cavill sort of a weird alien latex-looking suit, but it still emphasized his masculine physique, and that's the point of the Superman suit. It is meant to emphasize the fact that he really is a very strong, muscular man. But this costume... I've noticed people saying that they think it looks baggy. I don't necessarily know if I agree with that, but it does look boxy in a weird way. It doesn't look form-fitting, that's for sure, and it isn't really emphasizing his physique at all. Now, granted, he's sitting down and kind of bent over, so that is going to affect how the suit lays on him, and it's difficult to really get a proper assessment of how the suit looks based on this pose. All the same, though, it is kind of strange to see a Superman suit that looks more like a workman's uniform than what we normally see from the Man of Tomorrow. And then, of course, there's the collar. Now, the collar, of course, is going to stand out because that was a major running aesthetic of the New 52. When DC relaunched everything under the New 52 banner, they gave every character a redesign, Part of that included removing the trunks, the underwear on the outside, if you will, from characters like Superman and Batman. Although a lot of people didn't like that, because once they were gone, they were looking at them and thought, oh no, they look naked without those. Put them back on, please. And they had that part retained with the Henry Cavill Superman suit. Apparently their trunks are going to be back on this one, though we can't really see them clearly in this shot but they're keeping the collar for some reason. And you gotta understand, in the New 52, practically every superhero suit had that collar. Didn't matter if it was Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Power Girl, Robin, Flash, Kid Flash, they practically all had that exact same collar on every single costume. Maybe the intention was to try and give the heroes a uniform look, but instead it just looked like whoever came up with that design didn't know how to draw a superhero costume from here up. And I gotta say, I never really thought the collars looked good. I didn't think they looked necessary. And it's weird to see that this suit is bringing it in. Now... Maybe there's a reason. Maybe they thought it actually would look better in live action. And maybe he's going to be the only one who has it. I have no idea. But, you know, I, I personally still am not really a fan of that. So, boxy outfit, collar. Is there anything I can point to that might actually look good? Well, I did notice something interesting about the S-Shield this time around. It actually seems to be inspired by the S-Shield we see in Kingdom Come, only with the traditional red on yellow instead of red on black, like in that book. 
although the black had a reason for the for kingdom come and i doubt that reason is going to be applicable here so yellow it is it is an interesting choice because we haven't really seen that translated into live action before I haven't really seen it translated into any of the other live action Superman suits before. There's ways, of course, that they figured out to blur the line between the outline of the shield and the shape of the Kryptonian symbol for hope. But this one always has stood out for being. What would even be the word to describe it? I don't want to use the word simple, but. It is perhaps the most straightforward because basically the S and the outline of the shield are one and the same. So it is an interesting look. There is certainly an argument to be, to be made for that being a good design for the S shield. And I'm curious if maybe that's a hint of what kind of tone the movie will be going for or maybe what direction this particular Superman story will be heading in. But then again, it is just a particular design choice, much like the collar. So, uh, at this point, who knows? I guess we can at least say at least they didn't go with the t-shirt and jeans version from the Action Comics relaunch. But what about the actual picture itself? Like, they chose this particular image for a reason. It's supposed to introduce not just how he's going to look in the movie, but also what the movie itself is going to be like, what sort of tone it's going for. That is the point of these kind of teaser images. And what we see here is Superman sitting down in an apartment, putting his suit on, almost casually, while there's some kind of world-ending disaster happening in the background. Is it Brainiac? I don't know. That seems to be the popular theory. But whatever the case, we do have that juxtaposition of an apocalyptic catastrophe happening outside the window, and here's Superman putting his shoes on one foot at a time, just with an attitude and posture that makes it seem like he's just a normal guy suiting up going to work. Or at least I think that was the intention. The other way you can look at it is the world is ending and Superman is just taking his sweet time putting his suit on, even though he could technically do it like that. I mean, I don't blame him for doing it in an apartment because there are no phone booths around anymore. But, you know, even in the olden days, Superman was pretty good at the quick change, so showing him changing slowly is an interesting choice. Though again, I think it's more meant to convey attitude here. And the attitude is more of a casual Superman, if you will. A Superman who is not so much... Well, let me put it this way. The image is emphasizing the man over the super, which... That dichotomy is something that people have been going back and forth on for years now. You all have heard it by this point. There are those who think that Superman is basically akin to a god because they're so focused on how powerful he is and how he can do basically everything to the point where you even wonder why there need to be other superheroes in the DC universe. But then there are others who say, well, if you really think about it, Superman is Clark Kent and Clark Kent is just a good old boy from the heart of America He's got those American values and a good heart and everything, so he's really just a normal guy who happens to have these powers. Which one wins out seems to depend on the writer, although a lot of people seem to agree that the more human Superman is, the better. Not that they want him completely depowered, but you don't want him to be the alien. You want him to be Clark. Clark is who Superman actually is. At least, that is the most popular interpretation. And it seems like that's what this particular image is going for. It's trying to emphasize that Superman is just a normal guy. This is his job, or at least that's how he's treating it. He's not all high and mighty. He's just an average Joe. He puts his shoes on one foot at a time, just like anyone else. And the only difference is that once he's dressed to do his job, 
it's going off and fighting crazy alien spheres that shoot pink lasers. It could work. I, I, I'm hoping that this is a good sign. Although, again, there are, is more than one way to read this particular image, so who can really say? In the end, Superman Legacy is going to set a particular standard for the rest of the DC Universe going forward. I know it's not technically going to be the first entry in this new DC Cinematic Universe. I think the first entry is technically going to be the animated Creature Commandos series. Although, you're only going to watch that if you're subscribed to Max, or you're pirating, and not everybody is necessarily going to bother with that. In fact, I think that the recent failure of the Marvel Cinematic Universe with oversaturating the market with multiple shows and multiple movies all happening at once that you have to watch all at the same time in order to get the full story, and seeing how that's been collapsing recently, has at least some people at Warner Brothers looking at that and going, Ooh, boy, I hope that's not what we're doing. So... It, but the movies are where it's going to be the primary focus. And, of course, Superman is going to be leading the charge with that, if I understand correctly. And there has been a question of if James Gunn really is the right guy to do this. Because, after all, on the one hand, he did knock it out of the park with all three Guardians of the Galaxy movies. The flaws of the third one are hard to ignore, I realize, although that's largely because of where it falls in the story, which is post-Infinity War and Endgame, so it had to deal with one of the dumbest things those two movies ever did, which was kill Gamora, then bring her back in a way that basically reset her to square one. So I can't really blame him for that. But even with acknowledging the flaws in mind, Guardians 3 was clearly the best post-Endgame Marvel movie since potentially Spider-Man No Way Home. I mean, that's what people say, at least. I wasn't that enthralled with No Way Home. Then again, I wasn't really that enthralled with MCU Spider-Man anyway. No offense to Tom Holland. But the fact is, the Guardians movies were the unexpected hits of the MCU that nobody thought they actually would like. Like, like, at the time, when the first one was coming out, space opera movies were considered box office poison, because there hadn't been any really good space movies for a while. And then Guardians came along, and people loved it. James Gunn was able to infuse it with both raunchy humor and loads of heart. Somehow, he made those two fit together when you'd think they wouldn't. And he managed to just keep upping that with the second movie, and even with the flaws, still managed to make it work with the third movie. However, at the same time, we must acknowledge that he basically wasn't sticking really close to the comics when it came to making these movies. He was basically allowed to get away with rewriting most of how these characters work, because... The Guardians of the Galaxy were like D or F list characters by then. Nobody really cared about them, not even the real true believers. So there weren't going to be that many people who were clutching their collected volumes and going to be ripping into the movie for not getting Rocket Raccoon's British accent right, which... If you listen to the dialogue in that first movie, I think it's pretty clear he was supposed to be British. But um, he got away with it. Some people, of course, might have taken umbrage with it, but for the most part, people didn't care how many changes he made. But that's Guardians of the Galaxy. Superman's on a whole different level. Superman is the superhero. You mess with him in any way, you're gonna get flack for it. And Gunn has claimed to be a DC fan. He's claimed to like Superman. I think he clearly chose Superman Legacy as the movie he was going to direct for a reason. But there is still the question of, can he pull it off? Like, is it going to be the same as the Guardians movies? 
or will he be kind of working his way in with a slightly more somber tone, a slightly more respectful tone? It's kind of hard to tell based on the fact that the only DC movie he's directed at this point is The Suicide Squad, which is basically Guardians of the Galaxy, but DC supervillains. So, I don't know. I know that James Gunn can deliver a story that balances the heartfelt and the irreverent. It's just a question of whether or not he'll be able to do it with Superman. At this point, even with how weird that costume looks, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Like I said, in the midst of multiple MCU flops, he churned out the only hit they've had in a long time. So, I want to believe he can do it. Only time will tell if he actually can. But as for the Superman costume itself, I mean, it is weird looking, at least based on this picture. Promos of superhero suits usually don't always do them justice. But, you know, if it doesn't work in context, even if the rest of the movie is good, but the super suit is just like, eh, that could have been better, they always change the look of the suit in the sequel, because that's how you justify making a new toy line. So, if it doesn't work, they'll probably change it then, if it gets a sequel. We will see. But for now, I'm just sort of on the fence about the suit. I'm hopeful for the movie in general. And that's where I'm going to leave it for now. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. Thank you all for watching. Now be sure to head down to the description to check us out on other platforms as well as find links to the five current books in the Tales from the Omni Vault universe. Again, thank you all and we'll see you next time.